All right, so there are pretty big differences when developing a mobile app and then a web app. In this video, we're going to go over five tips and tricks for building a Flutter app. And then at the end, we're going to show you how to deploy your website using Firebase. So let's get into it. Most of the things I'm going to share with you today are things that I've learned through the research I've done for building my own personal website. As you can see, it is still definitely a work in progress and we are actually building it live on Twitch. So the link's in the description if you want on those live sessions. But here's what we have so far. It's really basic and simple. Goes to little screens like that, doesn't do much. But I will use this site to show you what I've learned and things that you should definitely apply to your own website. So first big tip is normal text widgets are not selectable. You'll see where if we try to hover over this, copy and paste it, it doesn't work. If you do need your text to be selectable, which I would probably recommend for most of the text on your site, because it can be pretty annoying if someone's trying to copy paste some sentence on your web page and they can't do it. So the widget you need to use instead is called selectable text. If you see, all we do is add selectable text, we reload, and now we can actually select this text and we can copy paste it wherever we want. Using selectable text is a lot more web friendly. So tip number two, you notice we have all these buttons up here. They don't have a little hover animation above them. But if we go to this contact page that I have and we hover over this, you'll see the mouse changes and as well as we see the background light up. You do this using a mouse region. So here now on the main screen, we added a simple row with an icon button and a text. Nothing too crazy, but we hover over it. Nothing happens to the follow me or the actual Twitter icon. You get a clickable mouse, but that's because it's an actual button. So we can wrap our row with a widget called mouse region. And this mouse region widget has multiple properties you could have like on enter and on exit, which is what we were gonna use. So we'll define our on enter to set our Twitter color to colors.white. And if you saw our Twitter color is what our text is defined, as well as our icon button, the colors it's gonna have. And since it's a stateful widget, it sets state there. And then on exit, we will have something very similar, except we're gonna change the color back to gray. So now if we refresh this, when you hover over it, it turns white. Obviously that's still an icon button so you can click it, but it's a lot more web friendly now. Another thing a lot of websites need to do is to link to other websites. So now we click this, nothing happens. Well, how would you put out a new tab so that whoever clicks this button, they get taken to my Twitter page. You do that using a package called URL launcher. To implement this feature, we're gonna have an on pressed here and we'll create a function called launch Twitter and it needs to be asynchronous since we're launching a different site. So you just give it a URL that you want to launch. So you'll just give it Twitter dot com slash Tadas Petra, which is my Twitter. And then we'll do if and launch this URL and we need to await it instead is an asynchronous command. So if we are able to launch it, then we do launch it. Otherwise just throw some error. I'm going to say can launch. And it's as simple as that. Now we go here. You'll see hovers when we hover over it. We click it. it takes us to my Twitter account. That was the third little tip. Fourth tip. It's very important to have a responsive layout. You see if we make this small enough, my website will update to have a different navigation. Obviously, it's not perfect here. You don't want you want to do a little bit better with design. This should probably be more to the right, but definitely use some sort of responsive design. The easiest one is something I've gone over in another video, but I like to use layout builder. So this layer layout builder function is really easy. You get a builder and it gives you constraints. You can see what the max pixels are. Here we just check if it's under 800, we build one page. If it's under 1400 pixels, we build another page. Nothing too complicated here. I, I'll put a link in the description for the layout video or the responsive layout video I made. Now the last tip, tip number five, is to have navigation that shows up with a URL up here. So notice my website actually doesn't do it. So don't follow along with this. Flutter recently released a Navigator 2.0. And this is Flutter's new navigation routing system. This is a really good document explaining it. And you'll see when you click stuff, your URL will show up. So let's say you have different tabs. Like in here, we have different tabs. The portfolio tab, I go to this, it should say slash portfolio. That way, if I want to send somebody a link to only my portfolio, I can send them the accurate link. And that just overall makes your website look a lot more professional and clean. However, I've read that Navigator 2.0 is actually very complex and a little bit difficult to comprehend. 
So if you can, definitely try it. But I know another option is using GetX. They have navigation with named routes and it should work just like that and hopefully be a little simpler. So those are the five tips. Hopefully they help you out and let's get into actually deploying a website. We're going to be doing this with Firebase, which I think is really simple. And I really like Firebase for almost everything that it does, but you just have to go to the hosting, like get started and you will need to install the Firebase CLI. So let's copy this command, make sure to install it. For me, it's already installed, so it shouldn't take that long. If you're using Mac and having some permission issues, you just use sudo and there we go. It actually updated for me. So it was still useful. Next thing you need to do is Firebase login. I'm already logged in with my account, but if you're not logged in, obviously you will need to. And then to actually initialize your Firebase within the project that you're working on, you need to do Firebase in it. For me, I want to initialize hosting. It'll ask you a couple questions like which directory do you want to use for the hosting? The public directory is the default. If you want to configure as a single page app. I don't really know what the benefits and negatives of that, but you can look at those yourself. You can deploy automatic builds and deploys with GitHub. We're going to skip that for now. But there we go. Our project's initialized. So now remember we had the public folder. We still have it here. We can do delete. And then if we do flutter build web, you'll see it'll compile our Flutter app and it'll create a public folder again with the uh, files that we need to actually deploy. So sorry, I lied a little bit about that. The public folder is the one that will actually go to Firebase. Where your build will be deployed is in the actual build folder here. So you see I deleted the Flutter build for web. And now if we run that command again, Flutter build web, we should see our code show up here. And then I accidentally deleted that folder called public, but we'll create it again. And once that's done, I can copy all the contents from the build into public. And then to actually deploy to Firebase, all you have to do is Firebase deploy. And there we go, our project got deployed. So here we go, 5.09 p.m., which is the time right now. You can see in your Firebase that it got deployed. Sometimes it takes a, it takes a little bit of time for it to actually show up in the website, but let's see if it's there yet. Oh, it is, so this wasn't here before. It's already updated and ready to go. You can add your own personal domains using the add custom domains. And then all you need to do is copy these values into your A records, wherever you bought the domain, and they should show up there. Now, if I have my website, toddispetra.com, I go to it. See, this still isn't updated with the new, new things that I added, the selectable text and the mouse region, but it should take like an hour or maybe less and then it will be updated. So that's it. That's five tips for Flutter Web and how to deploy to Flutter Web as well using Firebase. If you want to follow along with this website build, make sure to join my Twitch in the description. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the video. And thanks for watching.